Nigeria have been drawn in Group B alongside Argentina, Korea Republic and Greece. They face a tough opening match against Argentina on June the 12th, then it's on to Bloemfontein to play Greece before taking on Korea Republic in Durban. Nobody gave us a chance. I would say it was a miracle. Because so much people back home, they have lost hope on us, you know. Nigerians always say like, uh, it's not over till it's over. We didn't give up, you know, on our dream. But it was hard. We started doubting that it's going to be possible. At the end, we could, you know, put our heads up to see where the walk up. Nigerian football is nothing if not dramatic. Despite the team's qualification for the FIFA World Cup, coach Shaibu Amodu lost his job when Nigeria finished third at the Africa Cup of Nations in January. Nigeria turned to former Sweden boss Lars Lagerbeck. The 61-year-old led the Scandinavians for a decade, guiding them to the knockout rounds in 2002 and 2006. It may be just what a fractious Nigeria team needs as it prepares for the first FIFA World Cup on African soil. After a tough qualifying campaign, expectations are diminished. But it was not so long ago that the Super Eagles were seen as the most likely African nation to challenge for the FIFA World Cup. Since making their World Cup debut in 1994, Nigeria have won admirers across the globe with the entertaining brand of football that took them to the second round in both 94 and France 98. In recent years, though, Nigeria have struggled, performing poorly in 2002 and failing to qualify in 2006. So the pressure was on Amodu and his team to return to football's biggest stage. They made light work of their second round qualifiers, winning six from six. But the third round would provide much more of a challenge, with Nigeria drawn alongside Tunisia, Mozambique and Kenya. Nigeria were forced to play catch-up with the Tunisians after a surprising scoreless draw in their first match in Mozambique. A crucial double-header against Tunisia gave the Super Eagles a chance to make up the lost ground. After a nil-nil away draw, the two sides met in Abuja in September 2009. Nigeria twice took the lead, but allowed a vital equaliser in the dying minutes. That meant there were still two points behind Tunisia, with just two games to play. In Nigeria, tension was mounting. The country's football-mad fans were facing the prospect of not being involved in the FIFA World Cup. The pressure was building on coach Amodu, and the players began to feel the weight of expectation, with the fans making their feelings known. During the qualifiers, there was a period we felt Nigeria giving, us, giving up on us. Against Mozambique, we had an empty stadium. We had, uh, they were supporting Mozambique more than us, booing the team, you know. Only a win in that penultimate game against Mozambique would keep Nigerian hopes alive, and it came in dramatic fashion. The game looked to be heading for a draw when Victor Obina gave the Super Eagles a lifeline with a 93rd minute goal to clinch all three points. It was to prove a pivotal moment in their campaign. Obena is just one of many Nigerians to have made an impact across Europe's top leagues. Still, despite their star names, Nigeria have won no major silverware since the 1996 Olympic title. One man stands head and shoulders above the rest of the Nigerian squad, Nwankwo Kanu. The evergreen 33-year-old striker will be making his third appearance at a FIFA World Cup and is the most highly decorated African footballer, having won the UEFA Champions League, the UEFA Cup, 
the English Premier League, the FA Cup and an Olympic gold medal. He's a leader. He's someone that, when I speak, I speak for the young ones. He's someone that any time we look onto him, each time he talks to us, he revives something in us. Because we look onto him not as Kano, as teammates. We look onto him as someone we have been admiring, someone that we've been wanting to be like. And Nigeria would need all that experience going into their final qualifier against Kenya in Nairobi. The equation was simple. They had to win and hope Tunisia failed to do so in Mozambique. The pressure was on. Then I remember the game against Kenya in Kenya, which is a miracle. Nobody believes that uh, uh, we're going to do it. But we, the players, we know we're going to win in Kenya, but we don't know what's going to happen in uh, Mozambique. The Kenyans clearly hadn't read the script though, taking an early lead. With his team trailing at half-time and facing the prospect of missing out on their second consecutive World Cup finals, Amodu brought on Obafemi Martins. It proved to be a masterstroke, with Martins equalizing on the hour. Minutes later, Yakubu put Amodu's man ahead. It was not to last long, though. There was a lot of pressure, you know. Uh, when we were 2-1 uh, up, like, you're feeling things are going well, then you see the equalizer again. I'm like, you don't see what's happening? I said, the World Cup is leaving me like in front of my eyes. I'm like, hey, I still have to hustle for my goal. We didn't give up, you know, on our dream. But it was hard. We started doubting that it's going to be possible. But Nigerians, uh, our mentality is we have to win. We are the best. We are the giants of Africa. We have to win. We must win. Then, you know, the goal came, we were happy, but then we already knew that, you know, God is on our side, that uh, we, it's meant to be for us to qualify. And after the final whistle, of course, the first thing is to look on the bench, the reaction on the bench, because we don't know what's happening in Mozambique. Then seeing everyone running in the pitch, I was all excited, I knew that, you know, it's done. And it was really a moment that uh, we cannot forget. After reaching South Africa so dramatically in their final qualifier, Nigeria go to the finals with a positive attitude. The African continent's most populous nation has enough talent to trouble the world's best and nothing to lose. Anything that wants to play against Nigeria, <sighs> they want to set a record for themselves. Because we know what we can do. When the Nigerian team gets inspiration, they really can show world-class football and you can just really, whoever you are, you just sit and enjoy it. If uh, we get that inspiration during the tournament, I think we can surprise a lot of people.